Hi friends, Molson here and welcome back to the series. So continuing on from the last video where I narrowly missed out on my final IM norm, I took a long break from chess for about two years which was nice and I came back into my first serious competitive tournament which was the Dobell Cup of 2010 and I had a good result. I went into the last round uh, playing IM Gary Lane and I didn't know this but before the game started the Arbiter actually came up to me and said that if I win the game I would actually get my final IM norm giving me the title at this point in time. I prepared a Royal Lopez the night before but because of this news I actually decided um, to change it up over the board and decided the split second decision to really go for uh, King's Gambit instead which was a must win game. And so we got 1 e4, e5, f4 over the board and my opponent took the pawn I went for bishop c4, which at the time was my go-to variation in the King's Gambit. I do believe that knight f3 is perfectly uh, playable as well. Most people don't like bishop c4 because of queen h4 check, but I don't mind it so much. Knight f6, I played the move knight to c3, and my opponent played bishop to b4, which is a line I've, I've seen played uh, quite a number of times. But I don't mind this for white at all, uh, because white can play the move pawn to e5. After the move pawn to e5, the knight has no good retreat squares in this position, so you have to really counter in the center with the move pawn to d5, which is a common counter in most e4, e5 variations, and good to keep in mind. So here, bishop b5 check. So throwing this check is very helpful, because when black plays c6, or blocks the check, then at least the pawn structure will be uh, somewhat damaged. I took pawn takes and I played queen e2 check to sort of disrupt black's development in this position. Black played the move bishop to e6 and I took here to stop castling. Rook goes across and knight to f3, knight to c6. So in this position it's very clear that black is looking to get some sort of king side attack going once he captures the pawn back. Black also has the bishop pair and black is looking to castle to the queen side here. The downside to the position is that the pawn structure is somewhat damaged and the king side attack is, is not um, completely a problem at the moment um, and later on white has a lot of ways to defend against it so it should be okay for the time being. Here I played the move pawn to d4, probably this is an inaccuracy, I should just castle here and it's totally fine. If bishop check I can always play king h1. After the move pawn to d4, queen f6 was played, I played bishop to d2. So attacking the pawn on b5, pretty much forcing black to give up the bishop at this point. Bishop takes, takes and a6 was played, castles, and castles. So now we reach into a opposite color bishop position and also the kings are castled on opposite ends. So here white wants to obviously attack on the queen side so I'm looking for pawn breaks such as a4 to break things up and black is trying to make something happen along the open g file. I also have ideas of trying to win back the f4 pawn and also because it's opposite color bishops I want to utilize the bishop of um, what I have which is the dark square bishop and I also want to go for the king because king safety is very important in opposite castle positions. Material isn't um, the top priority so it is okay sometimes to sacrifice some material if um, it allows you to go for an attack. I opted for the move knight to e5 here, but I could easily have gone knight to e1 and gone for knight d3, knight takes f4, followed by a4 type of plan. Knight e5, here my opponent took, and I took back with the pawn um, after rook takes f4, sorry. Useful in between move, so queen takes g7 and then pawn takes knight. So the idea here is that Yes, um, I get a pawn on e5, so I somewhat block my bishop if it ever comes to f4. But instead of going to f4, my bishop is planning to utilize this diagonal instead. Perhaps, um, as you'll see later in the game, I bring it 
towards the queen side instead. Here after the move queen g6, I played bishop to e3, bishop to f5. So the downside is black does get the bishop into this e4 square, but we'll see that we do a good job of just keeping things um, defended on the king side. Queen f2, bishop goes to e4, very strong outpost for the bishop. And here, played the move pawn to g3. So we're really weakening these light squares, but it's okay as long as black is unable to make use of them for the time being. Queen h5. And here after the move queen h5, I went for bishop to b6 in the game, which is freeing up some squares for my queen to enter the attack on c5. But in hindsight, I probably should have just gone for the move pawn to a4, just directly opening up things on the queen side. It's, it's very hard for black to defend here. For example, queen takes here is probably well met by just pawn takes. If queen takes here, we can play the move bishop to d4 and then pawn takes on a6 should completely open up black's queen side. Instead, I went for the move bishop to b6. The idea was to bring the queen into the game with queen to c5, but the problem in this position is my queen and bishop are on the wrong uh, configuration. I, you sort of want your queen in front of the bishop, not the other way around. Um, that way you get a very effective battery. Here after the move, bishop to b6, there's two rook moves for black. One is in fact not um, very good. After the move, rook to e8, the plan was to take the pawn, but then I realized that after I take the pawn, there's probably um, not working at all because uh, black has a tactical idea here, which I saw immediately after I played bishop to b6, and that's the move rook takes g3. So after the move rook takes g3, pawn takes, I get checkmated here in h1, so I have to take the rook. And then black just recaptures the rook back on f7, followed by rook g8, and here white is completely lost. So I realized my plan somewhat didn't work after rook to e8. My position is totally fine, I just need to play something different. My other plan was to go queen c5 check, and after king to b8, to try and reorganize my pieces. I wanted to play queen check, king across, and then bring the bishop back, followed by something like this but again it's just way too slow because black always has counter threats with rook takes g3 and I'm just getting checkmated also ideas of sacrificing the rook I don't think quite work and playing like this it's just way way too slow and there's not enough threats there for white so after rook e8 I think black blunts a lot of the threats and probably the position is still relatively balanced. Instead in the game, black opted for rook d7 which is immediately losing on the spot uh, to the move pawn to e6. And after e6 there's uh, virtually no defense here for black at all. We're just threatening to take the pawn. The rook can't move because queen c5 check is coming and otherwise yeah, pawn takes followed by some check or bishop c5 will um, win here. Pawn takes also loses to rook check and black here will find himself getting back rank mated or losing a lot of material in the process. Uh, so black resigned here and I managed to finally get um, my final norm. So I hope you enjoyed this game. Um, if you enjoyed the video leave a thumbs up and comment down below and subscribe if you want to see more weekly videos. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys on the next video. Take care.